Judge, do you remember a man named Keith Young? Yes. Good. For the benefit of my colleagues, uh, let me quickly cover the basics of his case. You sentenced him in 2018. Keith Young was a career criminal who had previously been convicted of trafficking cocaine. In 2017, he was running a drug business in his house where his children lived and was found with two one-kilogram bricks of heroin worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, along with a gun, ammunition, thousands of dollars in cash, and equipment to cut and package heroin for retail sale. The drug lab also confirmed that there was fentanyl in both bricks of heroin. And in one of the two bricks, there was actually more fentanyl than there was heroin. While at the DC jail awaiting trial, Young bragged about his arrest and about how he was a kingpin. Those are his words, not mine. Kingpin. He was even recorded calling his wife and brother to give them instructions on collecting drug money from people for him. The prosecutors filed a notice of Young's criminal history, which meant he faced a mandatory minimum of 20 years. You did not seem to like that, Judge. In fact, at his sentencing, you said, this is a quote, that you shared his frustration, that you couldn't give him a lighter sentence. I was shocked to see this in the transcript. I was also shocked that you apologized to this drug kingpin for having to follow the law. You literally said that you didn't think 20 years was fair. This is the quote. And for this, I am sorry, mostly because I believe in second chances. You apologized to this career criminal, a drug kingpin, in his own words. He was not some low-level, first-time drug offender who made a bad, bad choice. That was in 2018. But in 2020, you got a second chance. After Young's sentence, Congress passed something called the First Step Act, which reduced sentences for serious drug traffickers with lengthy criminal records. During the pandemic, lots of criminals like Keith Young tried to twist the First Step Act's compassionate release provision, which was intended for terminally ill elderly inmates to get early release and blame it on COVID. You had none of that, and that's good. You rightly said at his resentencing hearing, quote, COVID-19 is not only present in prisons, and you said that Young's past as a smoker and his claim of various other health issues did not entitle him to early release. If you had stopped there, I would have cited that as a great example of how you follow the law and made a well-reasoned decision. Unfortunately, you didn't stop there. You said in the resentencing that, quote, Congress did not make their changes under the First Step Act retroactive, but that if they had, then you could have given him a reduced sentence. But then you said, no matter what the law says, and this is a quote, Judge. The court feels as though in this moment, per Mr. Young's compassionate release motion, the court is being called upon to evaluate the length of his sentence under the revised section of the law in the First Step Act, and so it is almost as if I am sentencing him today. And if I were to do so, he would face a sentence that would be well below the 240 months that Mr. Young received. And so for that reason, I will grant Mr. Young's motion. Judge Jackson, before you granted this fentanyl kingpin's motion to reduce his sentence, did you contact any of the victims from his case? Senator, thank you for allowing me to address Mr. Young's situation. I, I asked a simple question. Did you contact the victims in his case or not? Senator, Mr. Young was not released. His sentence was reduced, and I did not contact the victims in and his case because there another... were no victims. He committed uh, a crime, a drug crime. There were no identifiable victims in his case. Drug crime is not a victimless crime. 100,000 Americans were killed by overdoses. Understood, last year. Senator, but there was no one to contact and because there were no You just acknowledge, Judge, you just acknowledge that you did not release him. You're right, you didn't release him. He filed a motion for compassionate release. You denied that rightly, but you reduced his sentence. He didn't file a motion to reduce his sentence. He wasn't eligible for a reduced sentence under the First Step Act because it wasn't retroactive towards him. You took a motion for compassionate release to get out of prison and turn it into a motion to reduce a sentence. So he's going to be released seven and a half years earlier, years from now. Last week, Judge, when we talked in our office, you talked about a lot about judicial restraint. Is transforming his motion for compassionate release into a motion to reduce a sentence for this drug trafficking kingpin, an example of judicial restraint, Judge? 
Yes, Senator, it is, and I will explain how. Mr. Young, as you say, was facing originally a sentence of 20 years in prison, which I imposed. I tried Mr. Young, uh, who went to trial, primarily because he was facing such a long penalty. I looked at the evidence in his case. He was absolutely the kingpin that you're talking about. But the way that our laws work, the 20-year sentence that he received for the amount of, of uh, uh, heroin that he had was increased based on a sentence that he received, I think it was 10 or 15 years before. He had no criminal history between the old, old sentence. I, forgive me, I can't remember exactly what it is, and I'm sure people will look it up. But 10, 15 years before, he had some minor sentence. Then he had this really obviously ser serious, terrible sentence. And the government filed what is called an 851, which is an enhancement based on his really, really old prior criminal history. I followed the law, which said that he had to go to jail for 20 years. It would have been more like 10 years if the government hadn't taken into account his very old criminal history. But I said, fine, this is the law. I'm following it. You're going to jail for 20 years. In the interim, COVID happens. We get lots of compassionate release motions, and there's a statute that Congress has enacted which allows defendants to seek compassionate release, to seek reduction of their sentence, not just release, redu reduction, release, some adjustment to their penalty under the law if there are extraordinary and compelling reasons to do so. That's the quote from the statute, extraordinary and compelling reasons. Doesn't say uh, anything more narrow than that, although you do have to look at the guidelines related to compassionate release, all of which I did related to his motion. And he argued several things. He argued his smoking, his asthma. These were reasons, he said, for compassionate release, and I disagreed. What I did find extraordinary and compelling is the fact that between the 20-year sentence that I gave him originally and the compassionate release motion that he filed, Congress changed the law. Congress decided that the old penalty, the old crime, was no longer eligible for the increased, so that a person who was convicted at the time of his compassionate release motion for doing exactly what Mr. Young had done would not get a 20-year sentence. That would not be lawful for a person at that moment. And one of the things that Congress says to the judges is care about unwarranted sentencing disparity. Care about the fact that the person you're sentencing is being treated differently than someone else who committed exactly the same crime. And I understand it wasn't retroactive in the sense that everybody, absent a compelling, uh, uh, absent a compassionate release motion, wouldn't have been eligible for resentencing. But here I have a defendant before me, and all of the factors that Congress has asked me to take into account, and a compelling argument that there were extraordinary and compelling circumstances, that is, a change in the law, that would create unwarranted sentencing disparity if I didn't take account of it. And so okay. what I determined under those circumstances is that I would sentence, resentence Mr. Young to the penalty that Congress had decided was the appropriate penalty for the conduct that he committed as of the time of his motion. Judge. Congress did change the law after a sentencing in the First Step Act. That was a terrible mistake. Congress specifically did not make that change retroactively. And you saw that, and you thought it was extraordinary and compelling. 
even though Congress specifically did not make it retroactive. You chose to rewrite the law because you were sympathetic to a fentanyl drug kingpin whom you had expressed frustration at having sentenced him to his, to his 20 year sentence in the first place. You twisted the law and you rewrote it so you could cut the sentence of a drug kingpin. That's what you did, Judge. Respectfully, Senator, I disagree. Congress provided judges through the compassionate release motion mechanism with the opportunity to review sentences. Congress, pre prior to the compassionate release mechanism being enacted, a judge who imposed a sentence would have no opportunity to revisit. In Mr. Young's case, the question was, with this compassionate release motion, under a circumstance in which Congress had changed the law, was that an extraordinary and compelling circumstance to revisit his sentence? And I made a determination that it was. So I suppose then, if you're confirmed, we can just count on you to always rule in favor of retroactivity, no matter what the facts of the case are, because it was a blatant, blatant rewrite of the law here, so you could reduce the sentence of a drug kingpin if you didn't like sentencing to 20 years in the first place. No, Senator, it was not. Senator Booker. 